So in this example, guys, now I don't want to try to do division here because obviously I see the power in the denominator is larger than the power in the numerator, right? So I want to start looking. I say, oh, OK. So I don't want to use division, but I can see that I can use a horizontal asymptote. And the horizontal asymptote states when the degree in the numerator is larger than the degree in the denominator, my horizontal asymptote is at y equals 0. Fairly basic and quick to get. Now my vertical asymptote, I have to go back to, out, I have to, go back to chapter 1 and say, ah, oh, when did the vertical asymptotes occur? Oh yeah, vertical asymptotes occurred when the denominator was equal to 0. Correct? Right? So I'll have x cubed minus 8 equals 0. Now this brings up an interesting point because we've talked about the difference of sum and difference of two cubes. And this actually is a sum and difference of two cubes. And let's just kind of go back and remind real quick. So if this is a polynomial, right, raised to the third power, how many zeros does this have by the fundamental theorem of algebra? Three. Does anybody remember how many were real, though, in this example? So this gets factored, in case you forgot the sum of two cubes. So if you guys remember, when we were doing solving the sum in two cubes, I said, you got to factor it. You can't just use the cube root property. You had to factor it. But that was because we were trying to find all the zeros, real, complex, right? But guys, this, if you do the quad, this is non-factorable. So you'd have to do the quadratic formula. And guess what? You would have two complex zeros here. Now, if we're trying to find the vertical asymptotes, do we care about complex, where a vertical asymptote occurred at a complex number? No, we're only concerned about where the vertical asymptotes occur at the real numbers, right? So you could see that our real 0 is equal to 2. Or, since we're not concerned about our complex integer, we could also just use the square root or the cube root method. Take the cube root of both sides. I cautioned you not to do this last chapter because we were trying to find all the zeros, real and complex. Here, we're just trying to find the real numbers, right? So we don't care about the complex. So that's why you can do it this way. Last chapter, that's why we didn't do it this way. Just trying to make a distinction. x equals 2. So there's your vertical asymptote. Um, let's find the x-intercept. So again, x-intercept, I'm using f of x instead of y in this case. But again, the same process is going to occur. Right? Remember what I said last time, guys. Every single time, you're going to multiply by the denominator on both sides. Every single time you have a rational expression set equal to 0, you're always going to get 0 equals the numerator. Every single time. So the easiest way to do this is rather than rewriting it and doing the algebra, x cubed minus 8 on both sides, you can just set the numerator equal to 0 to find the x-intercepts. Okay, It's just a little shortcut. Um, to find the y-intercept here, again, we talked about that's when x is equal to 0. So f of x, you know, is equal to 0 over 0 cubed minus 8. Or what we talked about was it's really the constant over the constant. Does this have a constant? No. So really, the constant you could say is 0, right? But again, remember, if you're plugging everything in for 0, you have 0 over 8. So 0 over 8 is 0. Now, I said y-intercept, so I'm going to use y instead of f of x. So y is equal to 0.